Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, a solemn assembly. First off, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, <clears throat> to the Akiam out there on the highways and byways, making their bodies a living sacrifice, all right? As the scriptures tell us to do so, blocking the fiery darts of Satan <clears throat> with the shield of faith. I want to say shalom to you brothers and continue to fight the good fight of faith. And continue to spread the good news, spread across the four corners of the earth, all right? And um, continue to be a, 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 a good steward, you know, in the house of the Lord's, all right? In the Lord's house, all right? And to the Akwaft out there, which is the sisters out there listening and learning in silence, I want to say Shalom to you sisters as well, all right? And uh, I want to say to you as well, keep up the fight, all right? <clears throat> As you know by now, you know, uh, the, the Passover, okay, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is coming up, all right, starting, um, I believe it's starting uh, this Sunday coming up, which would be, um, let me check that date again, it would be the fifth sundown, which would be Sunday sundown, all right, to Monday sundown, all right, which would be the Passover, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, seven days after. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. Um, just really, we coming into these times now, man. All right. Hey, where the, where the Lord, you know, we rehearsing the righteous acts right now. Okay. And part of these righteous acts is, is this Passover, man. You know, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which I was going to go into just to give you the history on, um, on why we celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread and how you celebrate it and, you know, uh, whatever it is. Uh, we're just going to read, you know, see where the Spirit takes us. But, you know, uh, this is a solemn assembly, man, all right? Meaning a serious assembly, okay? This is not a uh, occasion to get together to party. Uh, this is not an occasion to get together to just uh, see who cooks the best lamb. Uh, this is not an occasion to, um, uh, this is not a lamb dinner pretty much, <laughs> okay? This is pretty much a, a serious situation, you know, that um, we are we have entered into, okay? Uh, starting off with the destruction of uh, the Egyptians, man, okay? And uh, who are the modern day Egyptians? Uh, pursuant to Revelation chapter 11 and 8, we, in, uh, we now are in, you know, a spiritual Egypt, all right? Which, when you go to that word Egypt, is synonymous for the word house of bondage, okay? So we're still in the house of bondage till to this day, okay? So in this house of bondage, man, right now, man, we're, we're rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability, okay? Just like in the days of old, Okay? So, as you can see, the heading right here, <clears throat> it comes, you know, uh, actually, we, we were celebrating and commemorating, you know, the day that the Lord brought us out of Egypt, man. Okay, he brought us out of the land of Egypt, all right, under the um, uh, 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 iron fist of, of, of Pharaoh, man, right? He had us in, uh, in, 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 a, in a place, you know, and he had rigor, he had, he, he had us serve with rigor, man. All right. Meaning he, he he afflicted hard bondage slavery on us, man. OK, no different than today. All right. And when, when we in America. OK, like I said, in Revelation 11 and 8, we in the, our dead body should lie in the street in a great city, man, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. All right. So, um, like I said, I wanted to start off. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, right? This is Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, right? Moses and Aaron were brothers, right? They both were from the tribe of Levi, okay? In the land of Egypt, saying, This month 
shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. All right. So this is really, you know, around this time, you know, the Passover is the first month of the new year. All right. Which is a true new years. OK. The new years is uh, when the um, when it's not in this dead winter state. OK. When even though now, you know, these seasons and times is all messed, jacked up, you know, Esau and, you know, messed up the course of the earth and the course of the world. So everything is off balance. Okay, so uh, winter is not, we're not getting a full winter. Uh, uh, you know, we're not getting a real understanding of the new years, which is, the, you know, starting off with the Passover. All right, which is the true new years. All right. So, um, like I say, you know, right, right during the Passover, you know, this is the beginning of, this is how we know this is the beginning of the new years. All right. It says, verse two. This month shall be unto the beginning of months, all right, meaning the first month. It shall be to you, it shall be the first month of the year to you, you see. And it says, verse 3, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, right? And and this letting you know right here too, man, hey, he was talking to the congregation of Israel, no different than the New Testament, man. All right, this whole book was written, you know, um, about the Israelites. This is the whole book of the history of you know, down to the holy days about the Israelites, man, and the customs of the Israelites. It says, saying, in the tenth day of this month, uh, they shall take to them every man a lamb, all right, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house, okay? So like, verse four, and if uh, the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Okay. And uh, who symbolizes the lamb, you know, in today's time, right? That lamb with no blemish. And that should, should be in the next verse. Uh, let's just read it. It says, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, all right? And who stands out with no spot or no blemish, all right? Who stands out in the house of the, uh, of the congregation of Israel, man? Who's that lamb, all right? Hey, we all know it to be Yahweh Shai, man. Having no spot or blemish, man. That blemish, that blemish is sin, man. Okay? That blemish is sin. Okay? So he is the symbol, uh, Yahweh Shai, all right, who we ignorantly call Jesus Christ, is the symbol, all right, of how we are supposed to be, okay, uh, uh, how we supposed to uh, modern, okay, our uh, our life after, right? Okay, that's the that's the man who came with you know who who, who had no sin as Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, it says. And ye, verse verse six, it said, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, right? And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. What? Kill the lamb, right? It said, and and Yahweh Shai man was was uh, uh 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 was was delivered up during the Passover, man. Okay, so he was that sacrificial lamb, man. All right, he was that sacrificial lamb. All right, and we might get into that as well too. I think that's in Matthew, uh, like maybe chapter twenty-six, I believe. Okay, but um, uh, yeah, he was that lamb, you know, without blemish, man, that was delivered up, man, to get killed. All right, for 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 Israel's sake. All right, to atone, you know, for the sins of Israel. Okay, verse six. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood, right, and strike it on two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. All right? And that's where we get the uh, ritual of putting the blood, not actual blood, okay? We, we covered 
Right now, in today's time, we cover by the blood of Yahweh Shai, who we ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Right? We cover by that blood. Okay, so we don't have to go, you know, kill a lamb and take the blood, the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and put it on our doorpost no more. All right. So right now, okay, we are covered by the blood. All right, which the door is our minds and our spirit. Okay, and we are covered, you know, through that blood of Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, um, verse. Uh, yeah, verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Right? That's why we uh eat with the unleavened bread. Okay? No, with meaning the bread with no yeast. Okay? It said, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat. Right? And the bitterest herb we eating with now is more so like horseradish, you know, garlic or certain things like that. I think horseradish is the most... Uh, from what, from my understanding, is the most bitterest herb you can have right now, okay? And that's um, one of the, you know, uh, we when we rehearse the righteous acts, we do the same thing, you know, to the best of the, uh, of, of of our ability, okay? To commemorate uh, this solemn assembly, which is the Passover, all right? Before I go on, let's pull up the word solemn to understand. Uh, how serious uh, this situation, this uh, this uh, holy day is, okay? This is a solemn assembly, man. Okay? The word solemn, right? It says, perform with due religious ceremony or reverence. It's sacred, all right? It said... Uh, Devoted to religious observances, also of a vow made under religious sanctions, binding. Okay, solemn. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, it says, annual, established, religiously fixed, uh, formal, ceremonial, traditional, a derivative of solace, whole, unbroken, complete. Okay, what did it say? It was, um, it means it was a serious. Okay, it's probably, probably got to go to the blue letter under. But we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Let's finish back. All right. It says, um, we'll get to it. And it said, and take, okay, verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. It said, eat not it of it raw. Right, we don't supposed to eat our um our, that that Passover. We don't supposed to eat none of, you know, uh, the meat raw. All right, it said eat not of it raw nor sodden. Uh, right, so we don't supposed to like make out of, out of a stew or something like that at all with water, but roast with fire, his head, and his legs. Right, and with the uh pertinence pert thereof. Right. Uh, right now, man, a whole lamb, man, <laughs> costs a pretty good penny, man. So, you know, we got to do it, you know, to the best of our ability, man, because a lot of us, we can't afford a whole lamb right now, okay? we just rehearsing the righteous acts, man, to the best of our ability, all right? Exodus 12 and 10, it says, And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire, right? It's telling you right there, man. This is the this is the this is the um this is the ritual that we used to do, man. You know, every year. Okay, when the Passover came, right? We had we couldn't leave no lamb left over, man. If any lamb was left over, we was to burn it. It's lucky. Give me one second. Okay, Salaki, Salaki, got this food on in there, all right? Uh, what was I at? Verse uh, 10, and ye shall 
let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. All right. It says, verse 11, and thus shall you eat it. All right. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. Why? Because we was on the, on the run. All right. The Lord was, was getting us prepared to be able to, to, uh, to flee from Egypt. Okay. So with us being prepared, man, we had to be ready. Okay, our girds, our, our loins girded. Okay, all right, ready, ready to to to, to get out of Egypt, man. Ready to be on the run. We had to re eat in haste. All right, why? Because shit, hey, dude, hey, Pharaoh was pursuing us with his army, man. Okay, so we had to eat it that way. That's why you know it take longer. You know what I'm saying to cook the bread if it had yeast in it as well too, right? Okay. So that's why we 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 uh cooked unleavened bread. We baked unleavened bread. All right, verse twelve. It says. It says um. Off in the middle of uh verse eleven, it says, "And ye shall eat it in haste." Right. It is the Lord's Passover. Let's look at the word haste. Right. Let's look at the word haste. Okay. Kip's on there. Strong's H, 2649. Chepazon. Chepazon. Right? It says, hurriedly, right? Like in a hurry, in haste. Trepidation. Hurried flight. Okay? It means to hurry, to flee, hasten, fear, right? Like I say, we was on the run, man. All right, from Pharaoh and his army. All right, they was pursuing us, man. All right. Okay, if you know, understand the story of Moses, you know what I'm saying? When he went to Pharaoh and said, hey, let my people go, you know, the Lord, hey, if we was really just trying to go uh, uh, celebrate our holy days, you know what I'm saying, in a whole nother town, a whole nother uh, city, uh, or outside, in, you know, in the wilderness. Okay, so but Pharaoh, it got to a point where Pharaoh didn't even want us to do that. Okay. That he put more work and more rigor, rigorous uh, 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 labor on this man. Okay, so um, let's go back. Okay, right. So we had to eat, we had to eat that uh, that lamb and stuff. You know, with our with our loins girded, our shoes on our feet, because we hey, we had to be ready. Okay, it said for I would. This is this is. This is the um, uh, uh, where it gets into where the Lord is about to kill, you know, the firstborn. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. You see, they said all the gods were showing you right there. This was a polytheism or polytheistic. Theistic, theistic, whatever, you know, poly meaning many and gods. All right. They they was worshiping many gods, man. All right. And the Lord said he was going to come through and smite all the firstborn, man, of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. All right. And the Lord is going to execute judgment, man. He was <laughs> he was ready. All right. And if you could receive it, man, hey, that death angel was your house shy, man. Okay. So uh, it says, uh, verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, right? And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to uh, destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this is why we used to put the blood on our doorposts, man. Hey, so that angel can see that blood, right? And, and that Lord can, I mean, that, that death angel can what? Pass over our house. <laughs> you get it? Right? But instead of us using the actual blood of the lamb, hey, what we do, we we, we, we use the blood of, of, of Yahweh Shai. All right? And that blood 
is a is symbolic, man. All right, of our protection. Okay, so when the death angel come through or come over, you know, you know uh, 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 it will it won't see. It won't um, you know, uh, uh, we it won't we won't have to take part, you know, into into that um. Into that, you know, with that death angel, Slack. Okay. So it's a token, right? Let's look up the word token. Right? For a token. Right? It says a sign or a signal, a distinguishing mark, right? Hey, Ezekiel 9 and 4, man. Hey, set a mark. Uh, we should get it, but uh, it says set a mark on them. You know what I mean? But that mark is the why, man. That that mark is a mark of exemption, okay? And that mark is a sign, which is that blood, okay? Spiritually now, all right, is is a sign of exemption that the Lord will pass over, you know, pass over us, okay? Okay. So that's what the um that's what the to token is. Okay? So that's how we uh was to celebrate the Passover, man. During that time. That's how we was to celebrate the Passover, and that's what we try to rehearse the righteous action in today's time. All right. Now this is the feast of unleavened bread. All right. It says, uh, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, all right. Let's look up memorial. Okay. It said memorial, a reminder, right? <laughs> In remembrance. Okay. And what do we remember, man? We remember, hey, when the Lord showed mercy on us, man. Right? And took us out of the uh, land of Egypt, man. All right? Out of the house of bondage. Right? And we remembering. Okay, hey, the Lord had mercy, hey, by passing us over, man. We had that, we had that blood on our doorposts, man. And like I said, now spiritually, the blood is symbolic, man, of Yahweh Shah's blood, okay, in our minds. All right, that blood is 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 like a protection, right? It's like a shade, okay. All right, it says. Um, All right, it said, and, 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 and it should be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. All right, so throughout our generations, we were supposed to be keeping this, man. Okay, it said, ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever, right? <clears throat> you see that? So forever, man, we were supposed to be keeping this. It says, seven days shall ye eat eleven bread, even the first day. Ye shall put away leaven out of your houses, okay? Right? So we was to put, uh, you know, anything that had yeast, you know what I'm saying, uh, in a food or whatever it is, whatever had yeast, we were to get it out of our house, okay? And throughout our generations, we were supposed to re rehearse this act, okay? Yearly, okay? And what does the leaven represent? The leaven represents, you know, uh, sin, man, Okay? Hey, this, hey, what's that scripture where it said? A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump, right? So what we have to do is get the leaven, which is the sin, uh, spiritually out of our minds, okay? Our house, you know what I'm saying? Our, our, our body houses our spirit in the mind, okay? So spiritually, okay, you, uh, you're not really actually, you can't get yeast out of your mind or, or out of your spirit. But no, it's, it's, it's a spiritual uh, metaphor of you getting the sin and the, and the sinful thoughts and unrighteousness out of your mind, right? Okay? It says, and also we do also get the leaven out out of the house as well too, all right? It says, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day you should put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leaven uh, bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. All right. And it was that serious, man. All right. It says, uh, and in the first day, there shall 
be an holy convocation. All right. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation unto you. Right. So on the first day. All right. It was a holy convocation. All right. We get together and, and, and do the lamb with the unleavened bread. And on the seventh day, which is, it should be two Sabbaths. In this case, it will be uh, Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. Right. And next week it will be Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. All right. It said. Uh, the, the holy convocation unto no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. All right. So uh, we don't supposed to do no work. We're supposed to treat them days like a Sabbath. And it is actually a Sabbath. OK, which would be the sundown. All right. Um, um, t -t 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 -t. Right. So we don't supposed to do no manner of work in that day. OK. This is we reading we reading the holy days. This is your true holy days, man. All right, that we supposed to be commemorating yearly. All right, instead of these other holiday holidays, the folly days, really, uh, Christmas, uh, uh, what they call it, Easter, really. You know, around this time, you know, Easter coming up. Okay, but it's really the day of the Passover, man. Around the Passover time. Okay. All right, it said on um, verse seventeen. And ye shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for in this same self same day have I brought your in your armies out of the land of Egypt. Right. Therefore shall ye observe this day and in, in your generations by an ordinance forever. Right. And that's why we celebrate it, man. Okay. It's a memorial there. You know what I'm saying? We celebrating yearly. Hey, for the Lord bringing us out of the land of Egypt. Okay. It says. In the first month of the 14th day of the of the month at even, it said, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and 12th day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. Right. So so for seven days, there don't supposed to be no yeast in the house, man. OK, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened. All right. Even that soul shall be cut off. All right, from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Okay, so <clears throat> with that being said, man, hey, that leaven represents sin, man. All right, even though we rehearse the righteous acts and do we do physically get the leaven and, and things of our, out of our house, okay, but hey, it's really your house, you know, and your your, your house, you know, uh, houses your spirit. Hey, so the Lord. Pretty much want us to get all the leaven, you know, in, in, in the sin or the unrighteous thoughts and acts, you know, out of our life, man. Okay. It said, verse 20, you shall eat nothing unleavened in all your, in all your habitations. Shall ye eat unleavened bread? All right. It said, um, then Moses called. OK, for the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill uh, the Passover. I think the, the word Moses mean to draw out something like that as well, too. Uh, draw the water or something like that. Uh, let me let's look it up. Y'all give it a uh, Yeah, it means to draw. See, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, because what? He was drawn out of the water, man, out of the Nile River, man. Okay? I just wanted to prove that. You know, I don't want to say something and really don't prove it like that. Okay? <clears throat> All right, it said, And ye shall take a uh, bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood uh, that is in the basin and strike uh, the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door um, of his house until the morning, right? And, and, and during that time, we wasn't, until the morning came, we weren't supposed to leave the house. After we put that blood on the door and all that, hey, we weren't supposed to leave that house, okay? Why? Because the Lord was going to work during that night, man. Hey, that death angel came, right? And he was putting that, like we read earlier, he was putting the firstborn, Okay, 
of the house of Egypt and of the cattle, all right, to, uh, of the beast, hey, putting them to death. Okay? And that's what's going to go on. That's what's going on right now. And the Lord is putting, putting uh, 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 Egypt, you know, which is America, man. Babylon the Great. All right? And that death angel is out here, man. Okay? So, um, let me see if I want to go into that. Right. We can go in. We can go to, um, hey, man, let's go to uh, when the Lord was finna get uh, crucified, man. All right. On the Passover. During that time. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, the Lord, it was a solemn, uh, a solemn, a very serious. Oh, hold on. Let me see the solemn. <clears throat> Let me look up solemn. I think it's in Leviticus. Salak. Mm. Let me look right here. Already somewhere. Right. Mm-hmm. I knew it was in Leviticus. That's what I said, too. Oh, right here. 36. No, that ain't it. Oh, friend. Seven day. Solemn assembly. Let's just look up, because I wanted to look this word solemn assembly up and see what that says. Mm-hmm. All right. Look at that word, solemn assembly. Okay. All right, sacred. What we read earlier, sacred, solemn. All right. Okay. Uh, restrain, close up, shut up, restrain, boom, boom, restrain, restrain, under restraint, coming to the analogy, hold back, to hold back, also rule, close up, be yeah, able too fast, uh, keep yourself close to the dumb, frame, rain, restrain, shut up, stand, slap, stop with the hold, huh? I know I've seen it somewhere, man. I don't know if it was in solemnity, solemnity, ceremony, boom, boom. observation of ceremony, pump. I'm like, uh, I'm like, it'll come back to me. Yeah, but it's just it's a serious a serious situation, man. Do right. Important. It say right here, important. Very important. Okay. Complete punk. Okay. Boom. Yeah, cause yeah, I was shy, man. Hey, he he was finna get delivered up, you know, to get, you know, to um to get killed on that day, man. So you know the mindset he was in, okay? You know the mindset uh, Yahweh Shah was in uh, during this time, okay? <clears throat> hey, ain't no easy way to, you know, to tell somebody they finna get, uh, you know, they gotta get killed, okay? Had to get, get delivered up to be uh, crucified, man. 
Okay. So, Matthew, we can start at um, 18, 17, 17. There you go. Yeah. See, yep. This is uh, like you can see right here, Judas bargain, man. Hey, Judas, hey, that Judas goat, man. He sold him out, man. All right, for some silver, man. Judas is scary, man. Okay. It said, um, let's read. All right, we can start at 14. It says, Matthew 26 and 14, it says, uh, the one of the 12 uh, called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest, right? Um, it said, and said unto them, what will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted, covenanted, all right, with him for 30 pieces of silver, man. All right, so they made an agreement. All right, with Judas Iscariot, hey, man, I'm going to give you 30 pieces of silver, all right, if you give up, you know what I'm saying, yeah, I was shy, okay? This was happening, man, around this time, man, okay? It said, and from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him, right? Hey, so this was what was going on during that Passover time, man, all right? The Lord knew. Okay, that Judas was going to uh, 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 portray him, man. Hey, what happened when the Lord, hey, he said, huh, go and do what you got to do, man. All right? Go and do what you got to do. All right? Could you imagine that, man, knowing that, hey, you knew, you knew what was going to happen. You knew Judas was going to betray you. Okay? It said, verse 17, now the first day of the Feast of Unloving Bread, Right? I told you this was around that time. All right? We just read that in um in Exodus 12. It said, The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahweh Shai, saying unto him, Right? So this letting you know also, too, a, um, uh, 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 we was rehearsing the righteous acts throughout our generations, man. All right? And we still rehearsing the righteous acts right now to this day. All right? It said, and he said, um, Salak it. He said, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahweh Shai, saying unto him, where wilt thou uh, that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? All right? Pretty much where we going to eat the Passover at, man? What we going to gonna do this at? He said, and he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Okay? All right, it said, and the disciples uh, did as Yahweh Shai had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover, right? And that's what we're going, that's what we're doing now, man. We're in preparation right now for the Passover, okay? That's about to happen, Saturday, Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. We're in preparation of the Passover right now as we speak, okay? Hey, every man got a task, man. Some man got a task to get this. You know, the lamb. Some man got a task to get the bitter herbs. You know what I'm saying? So all the responsibility won't be on one person. Okay? So that's exactly what we're doing. We're pre prepping, you know what I'm saying, for the Passover. Okay? It says, the last Passover, as you can see the head, verse 20 says this. Uh, now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. All right? It said, and... As they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. See, here it is. Yahweh Shad knew that one of them was going to betray him. Okay? It said, And they were exceeding sorrowful, right? And began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? So they was asking the Lord, Hey, Lord, is it, is it me? You know what I'm saying? Am I going to be the one who betray you? Like, what, what's going on? He said, And he answered and said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the in the dish, the same shall betray me. Okay? So is he letting them know, man? Hey, it's going to be somebody amongst us, man. All right? Hey, so if we can receive that, man, hey, it's going to be, the, hey, the Lord can put a spirit on one of, 
uh, uh, our brothers, man, or one of or me, you know, to betray uh, one of the brothers, man. Lord willing, he don't do that to none of the brothers I'm around. Okay, but it's a possibility, hey, man. If it happened to you, I was shot. Hey, it can, it can happen to us. It says, the son of man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Right? Destruction to the, to the man. It said, it had been good for that, that that man if he had not been born. Right? So it's, it'd be better if this dude wasn't even born. Man, Judas is scary. All right? Now, peep this. It said, then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, so the, Judas already betrayed him. Right? <laughs> he said, uh, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, thou hast said. You see that? <laughs> thou hast said. And it said, um, it said, verse 26, the Lord's Supper instituted, right? It said, and as they were eating, Yahweh Shai took bread and blessed it and break it, right? And gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, right? So we, we eating in commemoration of the Lord's body, man. Okay, we not eating his actual body, man. Okay, but we doing it in remembrance, of the body because he sacrificed his body. His body went through uh, a lot of torment, man. Uh, he was getting stabbed, you know what I'm saying? He was getting uh, punched and kicked and, and and beat, man. Okay? So we doing this in remembrance of the Lord, man, and what they did to his body, man. Okay? That stigmata, man. And his body was marked, man. All right? It said, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink it, uh, drink ye all of it. All right. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. That's why hey, Yahweh Shai uh, 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 shed that blood, man, had to be delivered up, man, for the remission of the sins, man, of Israel. Okay. Mainly for the elect and his apostles. All right. Hey, and, and hit that, get that blood go, man. Hey, that's that blood of that lamb, man, without blemish. Okay, we read in Exodus chapter 12. Okay? So that blood represents, of course, they weren't drinking actual blood. I'm sure they were drinking some some, some, some good wine and that the Lord probably made. You know what I'm saying? All right? I'm just speaking as a man. Okay, it said, verse 28, for this is my blood of the new Testament, right? So this is this is that New Testament, right? Which is Yahweh Shai, man. This is that blood that we covered over, you know? That we didn't have to put it on our doorpost. Hey, this is the blood for us, man. In remembrance of the Lord, which he shed for many of the remissions of sins. It said, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine of the vine until that day when I drink. It knew with you in the father's in my father's kingdom, man. That's the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Excuse me. Right. So pretty much he's saying, hey, from from now, okay, I ain't finna drink this. This is gonna be the last time I'm drinking this. Which, all right, the next time I'm gonna drink it, which is gonna be in the kingdom, man. Okay. When we celebrate the vows of in the kingdom. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it says. All right, verse 30. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Okay. It said, uh, Then said Yahweh Shai unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. You see that? Hey, the Lord knew he was going to get delivered up to be killed, man. All right. And, 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 and guess what? He was, he's that shepherd, man. And we the flock. All right? And guess what? We were scattered, man, after Yahweh Shai was killed, man. All right? Hey, when did that happen, man? Uh, 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 70 AD, man. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation is near, man. All right? That happened in 70 AD, man. The Lord prophesied that that was going to happen, and it did happen. Okay, it said, verse 32, but after I am risen again, 
I will go before unto, I mean, before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Right? Yahweh Shai said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, before the cock crow, that thou deny me thrice, right? Hey, hey, Yahweh Shai said, look here, Peter. Hey, before the cock crit, uh, crow, you're going to deny me three times, man. Okay? He already didn't told Peter that. And that's exactly what happened. It said, Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples, man. Right, so that should put us in a humble state, man. Because we don't know what spirit we're going to be in, man. Truth be told, we don't know what spirit you're going to be in. Okay? So we got to make sure that we, we in the right spirit, in the humble spirit, man, for the Lord put that type of spirit, a Judah spirit on you, man. All right? Okay? So this says right here, the head, and it says the garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane right? And we're going to look that Gethsemane up. It says... Then cometh Yahweh Shai with them unto a place called Gethsemane, right? And said unto the disciples, sit here, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder, right? So the Lord was telling the disciples, man, sit right here, man. I right, stay here. I'm going to go over here and pray. All right, let's look up the Gethsemane, though. All right? All right, it says, hey, an oil press, Right? And the oil is, is, is symbolic for the wisdom, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. It said the name of the place of the, at the foot of the Mount Olives, right? Beyond the torrent Kidron, right? Oh, that's crazy because you got to press the olives to get the oil, you know? Hence, olive oil, right? That's crazy. Let's see what this is. Uh, wine press, wine vat. All right, let me see. Wine fat, all right? All right, and the wine symbolizes the blood, man. The Lord blood was pressed uh, uh, over towards the, uh, the you know, the Gethsemane, man. If I'm saying that right, let's say that. Strong's G, 1068, Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Gethsan Mani, right? Right? Let's see what that other one. Let's see. It. Yeah, fat oil, oil, olive oil. All right, a staple of fat, you know. Boom, metaphorically of fruitful land valleys. All right? So you get it. You get the point. All right? Let's get back to the scriptures. Okay? Just bring that out for edification's sake. It said, and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. It said, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful, right? And very heavy. You see that? Hey, the Lord, hey, man, look at this, man. He said he began to be sorrowful, man, and very heavy, man. And the Lord was depressed, man. Right? That's a depression feeling, man. And that's how we feel now, man. Hey, why? Because we know it's about to be the end, man. We don't know whether, the, hey, we're going to get beheaded. We don't know if, the, hey, they're going to throw us in prison. You know what I'm saying? The triads. We don't know what's going to happen, man. All right? Hey, so we feeling sorrowful and heavy right now, man. We not in order. We don't get no respect in our house amongst our wives. We don't give respect amongst uh, 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 our community. We don't give respect in this world, man. Okay? So, yeah, we sorrowful and heavy, man. It ain't no easy way to tell somebody to, 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 to know you're going to die. All right? It said, then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding, exceeding sorrowful. Even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. All right, 
Let's look at that word sorrowful, man. I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine what the Lord went through with Baal. Strong's G, 3076. Mm -hmm. Lupeo. Lupeo. Right, he was sad, man. The effect was sadness, man. Caused grief. This is why it's a solemn and serious assembly, man. And very important. Throw into sorrow. To grieve. <laughs> you see that? To make one easy, uneasy. Right? Come on, man. What's the root? Sorrow, pain, grief, annoyance. All right? He was annoyed, man. Irritated. You know? You get a lot of people asking now, hey, why you mad? Why you so mad? Why you so always on the edge? You know? Hey, man, because I know something you don't know, man. I know what's finna happen. Hey, the men of the Lord know what's finna happen. That's why we already sign and cry, man. For the abominations that's on this earth. And we wondering why you not signing. We, why, we wonder why you not feeling the same way we feel. We feeling the same way Yahweh Shai was feeling, man. When he was about to get delivered up. It's All right? So... <clears throat> Um, exceedingly, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry with me, meaning stay with me, and watch with me. Right? It said, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, right? Meaning he he got on his knees and started praying to to the Father, man. Oh my Father, hey, this this trumps that Trinity doctrine, man. Hey, if Yahweh Shai was the is the Most High, is 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 the Most High God. Then why is he who is he praying to right here? Right? He's praying to his father that's in heaven. Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. You see that? Hey, what was that cup, man? He knew he was finna get delivered up to be killed, man. That affliction, man. Hey, so even in that moment, hey, Yahweh Shai, hey, hey, he was, hey, it said he was sorrowful, man, and very heavy. He was going through a deep depression at the time. Sounds like us, don't it? Hey, he asked the, he asked the Lord, he asked the Father, Yahweh, man. He said, hey, if it be us, hey, take this cup away from me if it's possible. Let this cup pass from me. It said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt, right? Hey, the Lord said, he said, listen, because if it was up to him, Hey, if it was up to Yahweh Shai, guess what? He 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 didn't want to go through that. But he understood why he had to go through it and who he had to go, who his mission. Because it ain't our will, it's the Lord's will, man. Yahweh's will. Okay. All right. And hey, hey, knowing that he still got crucified, you know what I'm saying, on that cross, hey, the Lord didn't answer him. Right? So, Yahweh Shai knew what time it was. Hey, Yahweh Shai knew what time it was. Okay? It said, uh, uh, Shalak, it said, and he cometh unto the, to the, verse 40, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. You see that? And said unto Peter, what? Hey, could you not watch with me one hour? Man, what's going on? Right? And that's why we watchmen, man. Spiritually, man, we watchmen, man. We don't supposed to fall asleep, man. And this devil ain't getting no, hey, he ain't sleeping, man. All right? Hey, so the Lord said, man, for one hour you can't stay up? Okay? It said, watch and pray. You see that? That ye entered not into temptation. Hey, that's what the Lord said. Watch and pray. That you eat tonight and into temptation. All right? And that's part of the prayer that he told us to pray, man. All right? In Matthew 6. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All right? It said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation that 
I mean, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see that? He knew what he had to go through. Hey, but he, hey, the flesh was weak, man. He had jitters, man. He was nervous. All right? The flesh is weak, man. Okay? It said he went away. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup uh, may not pass away uh, from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. You see that? He prayed a second time, man. Hey, he was, he was calling to the fire. He was calling to Yahweh, man. Like, hey, man, look. Hey, the, the flesh is it's getting to me, man. Hey, I don't want to go through this. <laughs> I don't want to go through this, man. It said, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. You see that? I mean, they was dead asleep. <laughs> and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. All right? Then cometh he to his disciple and said unto him, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. All right? Into the hands of the sinners. He said, Rise, let us be gone. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. All right? You see that? This is all happening during the uh, Passover, man. Okay, and this is the betrayal, man. It says, um, it said, and while he yet spake, lo, Judas, you see that? One of the twelve came, uh, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs from the chief priests and elders of the people. All right, it said, now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, whomsoever I shall kiss. The same is he. Hold him fast. All right, you see that. So it seemed like, hey, from that, from that, they didn't even know how Yahweh Shah looked. <laughs> Some of them, they, they didn't even know how he looked. Why? Why would he have to kiss him to know who 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 Yahweh Shah was? Okay. And that's how we gotta be, man. Incognito, man. Right? Under the radar. Like Clark Kent, man. All right? It says, it said, and verse 49, and forthwith he came to Yahweh Shai and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Friend, <laughs> you see that? Wherefore art thou come? All right? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh Shai and took him. They whooped his ass, man. And I do believe right here, man, Yahweh Shai was being sarcastic, calling him friend, man. Since he already knew he delivered him up. He said, where you coming from, man? Where you come from? Right? You want nowhere to be found when I was over there praying and all that shit. Now you want to be around and pop up and, and, and kiss me, man. All right. It said, and behold, one of them which were uh, with Yahweh Shai stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote his ear off. Right. Hey, they were surgical with their sword, man. They were surgical with their sword. They understood. Hey, they knew the art of that art of war. Okay, but listen to what Yahweh Shai said. He said, then said Yahweh Shai unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with it. With the sword. You see that? Hey, so that goal, that's a sign for the brothers out there that's out there with them pistols and out there with them, with them, with them choppers on the side. Hey, man, this is not a spiritual, I mean, this is not a physical war, man. This is a spiritual war. Right now, we're in a spiritual war. It's going to come a time, Jeremiah 16 and 16, where the Lord is going to turn us from fishes, you know what I'm saying, to hunters, man. And that time is coming very soon. Right? But you heard what he said. He said, put that sword up. Yeah, they carried swords with them everywhere they went. Yeah. 
Hey, but that's the blessing of Esau, man. Eat him. The Romans, man, is is the is the um the offspring of Esau eat him, man. Hey, that's their blessing. So how you gonna use their blessing against them? That's why he say I ain't put that up, man. It ain't it ain't it ain't time right now. All right. It says, then Yahweh said unto him, put up again thy sword unto his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. You see that? that hey, that's a lesson for them camps out there, man. Right? Shikari. You know, all these other camps. You want to come and camp with your, with your rifle on your hip. Hey, this is not a, a carnal warfare, man. We ain't it's, it's pursuing Ephesians chapter 6, man. We in a spiritual warfare, man. Where we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All right? It said, think as thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Hey, hey, how I said, man, look here, man. You don't think I can I pray to the father, man? And, and he, he give me what I need to destroy these motherfuckers? Okay. It said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? You see that? Hey, Yahweh Shot knew what time it was. He knew it wasn't the time for him to fight. Okay? It said, in the same hour it said, Yahweh Shot to the multitudes, are ye come out as uh, against a thief with swords and staffs for to take me? It said, I set daily with you teaching in the temple. And he laid no hold on me, right? You know, so this got to be the Pharisees, Pharisees and the Sadducees, man. Man, I'm out here teaching with you every day. Y'all ain't touched me, man. All right? He said, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets uh, might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. So the disciples fled. Hey, remember what it said? Hey, smite, smite the shepherd and all y'all going to flee? It shall scatter. That's exactly what happened, man. He prophesied what was going to go on. So, Lockyer, give me one second. Right? Early we read that, man. Smite the shepherd and, hey, Hey, and 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 the and the, and the flock gonna scatter, man. <clears throat> what was that? It. That was the earlier part in this. Uh... Hey, who's up there? Uh, right here, it said, then said Yahweh Shah unto them, all ye uh, shall be offended because of me this night. For it's written, I will smite the shepherd, right? And the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. You see that? That's what we just read. Okay. Okay. Right? It said, but all uh, this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him. <laughs> you see that? And fled. All right? Okay? So this is a, a hey, man, that during this Passover, man, hey, this is a solemn assembly, man. All right? Yahweh Shah knew what was going on, man. He knew, he knew what was happening. All right? You know, so this is on, goes on down, man, where where it talks about uh, 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 Yahweh Shah getting, you know, uh, delivered up, man. They renting his clothes and all that stuff. And hey, Peter denied him three times, like he like he uh, said it was gonna happen. All right, you see that? And and Peter remembered the words of Yahweh Shah, which said unto him, "Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice." And he went out. And wept bitterly. Okay? So it's just like, hey, right now, hey, man, this is, that's why this is a solemn assembly, man. Because right now, hey, our Lord, man, was getting crucified up to be delivered, to get killed, man. Okay? Hey, that's your Shah's Passover, man. Okay? 
And he had to do he had to go through this, man. All right. <clears throat> he had to go through this, man. All right? And like like the elders and apostles used to say, man, hey, keep keep this um solemn assembly, man. Which is the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, man, in perspective, man. Right? Let's look at the word perspective, man. Right? <clears throat> All right? Perspective. All right? It means it said the signs of optics. All right? It says signs of boom, 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 of sight, right? All right, that word spec means the sight or vision, all right? Optical, right? Clearly perceived, right? Okay? Look through. Look closely, all right? Pertaining to the science of optics, right? Look at, right? So that's what we're doing. We're keeping it in perspective, man, and understanding, man. Hey, looking at this. As a symbol, man, looking at this 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 holy day as a symbol, man, of what the Lord brought us through. All right, and man, <clears throat> to read more, you can go into uh, Leviticus chapter twenty three, starting at verse one, on down. You know, saying to get a, a more understanding as well too. Right, and with that, I'm gonna give all praises to Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakadash. All right, this is uh. The history of the uh, Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we are entering into, all right? And keep this uh, situation, keep this in perspective, and keep it a solemn assembly, man, all right? With that, I'm give all praise to you. Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shem, Kakadash, all right? Kwame Yashra, Baba Ball.